Hey, it's Doug inside the CCM Cafe with two ladies that are going to talk to you about an amazing new film called Into the Spotlight. I'd like to welcome Leanne Baker and Kate Larson. Hello, thank you. Yeah, nice to be here. Thanks for having us. us. Thank you so much. I know we talked about you're feeling like your channel. I have to a... use this because I feel important <laughs> and I feel like I'm a news anchor, maybe even in a musical. Oh. Well, that would be a twist. Right? News anchor musical. This is amazing. I feel I always have to go to superhero movies because I have two boys. And, you know, there's always that anchor in there with the microphone that has the big square thing around it. This is fulfilling my dreams. Thank you're feeling you. feeling good? Okay. I'm feeling powerful. I'm not going to try to sing in any of the interview, but if y'all want to, <laughs> feel free at any time. All right. <laughs> Well, Into the Spotlight. So let's talk about that first. The synopsis of Into the Spotlight is? A girl that finds a magic microphone that brings her on a journey of fame, and she soon goes back to her family and her friends. All right. And the reason I turned to Kate for that is that Kate wrote this when she was 14 or 15. I wrote the short film when I was 14 and then the feature when I was 15. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. These microphones not nearly as magical, but... Now this was a I talk could about be magical. Could they be magical? They I think be. they could be magical. I like the box. I like what you're saying. Pandemic positive. This is a pandemic positive. Yes. This film and this story. Yes. So it was like right in the midst of COVID. So the lockdown happened. I remember my mom was like, "This is probably the last time you'll be walking around the mall without a mask on." for a couple months. And so I was like, "Oh, it's like this thing is actually serious." And so at first it was like 2 weeks and then I was like no, this is like a life changing situation. So I, I saw all my friends going through, you know, like we're all like navigating new waters and, you know, depression really kicked in. I know for like me and for other, some other people. So I was like, we need a movie, like a family movie that we can watch with our families during this time. And so I was like, is someone else going to make it? And I was like, no, why don't no I one's make going it? to make it. <laughs> so yeah, from there, like we made the feature, I mean, the short film, and it got such great traction that, you know, moms kept coming up to me like during like, festivals and they they told me that their daughters need a story like this so I was like you know what we need to write it yeah. yeah I think kids went through a lot I mean adults did too but uh kids got a lot of their lives taken away from them and stolen from them over the past mm -hmm. three years mm -hmm. and they got um put in front of a television that had a lot of less than desirable content mm -hmm. bombarding them on a daily basis and so they need something fun happy and clean to watch and that's where Kate stepped in and filled the needs of her generation. Well, I don't want to over-spiritualize, but I mean, how many people that are re-watching this going, I'm 56 and I've written 50 screenplays and nothing's come to fruition. I mean, the connecting of the dots that takes place for someone, for anyone, yet alone someone so young to do that. What was that like and how f did that feel? And yeah, it was all really God. Um, like from the moment that the story was really happening, I wrote a different short film. And I remember sitting on my bed and I was like, I cannot make this. I'm like, it's so like self-desirable and you know, like me wanting to show off my acting abilities. And that night I asked the Lord to give me a new story because we already had everyone coming in from out of town to film this short film. So the next morning I remember cleaning up my room and I look at the, my, my microphone that signed my Gloria Estefan. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want a magic microphone. And right then I looked and there was a paper with Spotlight right next to it because I wanted to write a song called Spotlight. And God was like, that's your story. And I was like, oh my gosh. So immediately I ran out to my parents. I'm like, I have a story. I have a new story. We're going to like scratch the other script. We're like starting over. So from the very beginning, it's just been like God really like blessing. And like just for him to entrust me with the story has like blown my mind. And I'm so grateful. So. And to give her parents, I have to give kudos to the parents to give them the courage to really support this and, and see it, not just support it, champion it and see it through. You know, how many kids go to their parents, I mean, with a story that they want to do. And it's, oh, that's nice, honey, in the middle of cooking dinner, you know. And so I just have to say that Brian and Kaki are just two of the bravest people I've ever they met. They are. I'm so grateful for them. I'm like, like even last night we were talking about, the, like, the power of, like, parents praying over their children. And, like, that's, like, a big thing I saw in my family. Like, they were always supportive. And they, my mom always told me, she's like, if God gave you a dream, he put that passion in your heart for a reason. So, like, even if stuff was, like, going wrong during In the Spotlight, it was like, you know, like, God put this passion in our hearts for a reason. That's right. So, yeah. Well, I would definitely echo that as a parent, too, because I say sometimes I've been guilty when my kids were younger of bringing me something, and from the dad perspective, for thinking, we well, will never make any money on that. That's not right. practical. I have Everything. to watch my tongue, too. I'm reading a lot in the Bible about watching your tongue, because mine can be quite sharp. 
and point D. <laughs> so I'm trying to learn from this. And when my kids come to me with an idea, you have a moment to take a breath and either crush their spirit or encourage them. And even if that isn't the right project or the right idea, but to encourage them for the efforts and so that they can continue to go further with confidence. Yeah, so that's awesome. They fostered the creativity. Now we've got this movie coming out. So what do you hope the conversations would be after people have watched this? What do you think the dialogue might be uh, after they've done seen the film? Yeah, I think it's really easy to look at someone's life and want it. And so I think that's what's cool to come from the perspective of Laura is that she wants a spotlight, but then once she's in it, she sees the burden that comes with it. And so she really realizes to be happy where she is. And I think that was a part of my life that I wanted to bring out was, and I hope that like sparks a conversation that you can see something and want it, but you also need to look at the price that's pay, like attached to it. And yeah. also the importance of family. And, and the gratitude friends. of having what you have. Yes. The gratitude of looking around you, seeing your parents, seeing your friends, and just being so thankful to God for every blessing in your life. Mm -hmm. I think that is really missing from all generations from everybody, honestly, is to wake up in the morning when your feet touch the ground and be grateful. Yeah. So this is something that we've all wanted. This is something that we all need, good entertainment. So we need to go into the spotlight. Yeah. Talk a little bit about some of the folks that were in the film, maybe some stories about filming, some comedians you worked with, I don't know. Well, the mom is amazing in this. Yes. I'm just gonna say it She's right so now. so good. So I play the mom and shocker, I often play the mom. I don't know if you got that memo. You're America's favorite mom. I'm America's oh, favorite mom. Good luck. Good luck, world. <laughs> good luck, Laura. <laughs> good luck, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I play the mom, and it was really a difficult role for me to play. I really wanted the role that Victoria Jackson plays in it. She plays the principal that does the announcements, and it's she's absolutely scene-stealingly hilarious. And I wanted that role, and then they were like, no, no, we want you for the mom. And I was like, ah, oh, oh. she's very serious. She's very serious, this <laughs> mom. And she's kind of the killer of fun oh. a bit in it. But she has to be, and that was the heart. That was the really interesting part about the role is – even though you may be dousing, uh, you know, putting out some flames with, with, with water, uh, if that's what's best for your family and you know what's best for your family, you have to speak up. And it's walking that fine line of how do you not become the killer of fun and crusher of dreams while still maintaining that line of responsibility towards your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you also brought like a soft side to it. Oh. I like the, like the real like emotional side where it's like, the depth of the character of Kim. Like everyone on set was just awesome. Yeah. Like even like the, we have like a whole gang of kids in the film. Raphael Ruggiero, I keep saying his name incorrectly. He keeps correcting me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Versus Elaine Hampton and Justin Sterner and Alina Pitts played like Laura's best friends in the film. And just like our energy on set was just so much fun. Yeah. And it was just awesome being with them. And, and you have a really great mean girl too in it. Oh yes. Really Isabel, Isabel is Isabel. She's on wonderful. fire. She's so good. She plays the mean girl in this movie and then another movie that I have coming out in December, she plays Mary. <laughs> which there's not a nicer person on planet Earth uh -huh. than the woman who birthed Jesus. So she's got quite a range too. Yeah. <laughs> and we have Jeff Allen who plays the print uh, no, that one of the teachers and he's so funny. Yeah, and during his funny. scene I just always like laugh so hard <laughs> the, the point where it hurts That's awesome. what was it like to have written this and you're acting in this but then there's the director and then how does that feel as everybody starts moving around your pieces yeah so lisa arnold from like the moment she came on i could not have trusted anyone more with the script like she just met me where i was at and her vision for the film just blew me away and every single day like she's such a good leader and just so down to earth and sweet and i was and I don't really know that there is another director that could have pulled this off mm -hmm. because this film was shot in 14 days. Wow. That's amazing. That's almost unheard of. And she just excels at making it happen. She really does. And to go from, like, not doing any film. Like, I had done theater and trained in film and acting, but she was really, like, just a huge support system and every single time I get done with a scene she just like spoke life into me and so from the moment we started like right like from the moment I wrote it handed it over she's she just blew it away and anytime I hear someone say we can do that in three weeks we can film this film in three weeks I'm always like not without Lisa Arnold you can't <laughs> you just can't she's the master at getting it done in yes. three weeks that's awesome. which we did it in two 
she didn't too with this in 14 days, right? Yeah, 14 days. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, just in terms of faith or clean or healthy films or those kind of things for your long career and seeing all that, are we at a place now where Hollywood understands that that's needed, that that's desired, has the success of, of other no. films? No. no, no, no. They still don't get it. Uh, no, but here's the good news. Uh, the lane is wide open for us really, to start creating this content because Hollywood isn't interested in it anymore. They're not interested in really family-friendly, family-focused content. They're interested with content that has some sort of agenda. And, um, you know, I love good Christian films, good Christian shows, but there's also just needs to be regular entertainment that everybody can watch that isn't, you know, pushing a political agenda. So that's where Into the Spotlight comes in. It's just a really entertaining movie for kids to watch. Yeah, sit around with your family and you don't have to keep hitting the passport button. Mm -hmm. I think that was like one of the main things I wanted to do. I was like, I want to sit down with my family and not have like fear that something's going to come across a screen and we're yeah. all going to be like closing our eyes. So I think that was a big part mm -hmm. of writing in the spotlight. I was like, we need family movies because my like my favorite m m memories are going to the movies theaters with my yeah. with my parents. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like sitting around like on a Sunday or a Saturday just watching a movie together. I think families are like starting to lose that because we're losing content. So, and the set was she was talking about the kids getting along so well, and they did. It was really sweet to watch them all bond, but the adults did too. In mm -hmm. fact, um, I've joined forces with uh, Khaki, who was one of the producers on this, and uh, we're, we with uh, some other ladies, and are going to be producing another movie with Kate that Kate has written called The Glitch. So if anybody wants to find out any more information about that, you can go to theglitchseries.com, and it's a three-part trilogy. Wow. It's really, really cool. All right. That's very awesome. Well, and to speak to as far as the family friendliness, as I was doing research for this, I came across a mom movie review person online and was sort of reading their description of things. And I think the only content that she said was that kids were talking about or drinking coffee a lot. Oh my so there's caffeine Victory. in this film. Victory, <laughs> and if, it, if that's what we got, and caffeine's a huge part of my real life. Like they were like, I'm you don't, I don't have to win. pretend to love it. I love coffee. From the moment they were like, you get to pretend to pour coffee from a coffee pot. I'm like, you're feeding my addiction right now. So this is a problem. <laughs> that's awesome. Let's talk about the music on Into the Spotlight. So. You're going to watch the movie and you're going to think it's my voice, but it's not actually my voice. So when Laura finds a magical microphone, it gives her the ability to sing. So the magical voice you hear is actually Rizzy Myers. She, I have never heard vocals like that in my life. I, when I walked into the recording studio, I'm like, hello, Whitney Houston. I'm like, she's so good. And so we have nine original songs in the film. They were written by our wonderful writers and they really just bring a different element to the film and really bring it to life. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 always great to go to a movie that, or see a movie that you can all enjoy together, but to be able to walk away singing some tunes, mm -hmm. bonus. Seriously, I had those songs stuck in my head, like stuck in my head so long that my friends were like, seriously, Kate, you're still singing them? I'm like, yeah, I live these songs. And they're out like on all the streaming platforms, so anyone can listen to them. 